Okay, how's it going everyone? Today I just want to show you my little uh, quick fix for cooling down the A6000 series of Sony cameras. So I found this out last year. Um, basically I bought the A6000 and I found that after about half an hour to an hour of recording, it would start overheating. So I built this little guy. So it's a little fan powered by USB. And then what we can do is take a power bank or any USB power source. See, the fans are spinning. I'll move this close to the mic so you can hear it. So it's not too loud. If you're recording audio externally, it shouldn't be a problem anyway. So then what you do is take this, get the camera, get the label side, that's the side with the air push, and you can use your hand to feel it. You just slide it in there. Sometimes it might catch a little bit, but it's okay as long as you don't catch it too long. And then we just leave it like that. And that will keep this back cool just behind here. We can turn the camera on and we shouldn't see an overheating symbol. Now I've had this running for about three, four hours before with the fans going, running the camera off a dummy battery and I didn't see overheating at all. So this for me is my sort of perfect solution. Now the, this wire is quite short so sometimes I'll use something like uh, a USB extension cable like that to get the wire a little bit longer if the power bank's a bit further away. But I usually have this on some sort of um, holder near the camera anyway. So I'll just talk through a little bit how I made this. Now this case is a bit bit crap. I don't know. <laughs> it was just something I put together a cardboard really quickly so I can throw it back in. So what I did is I looked for some small fans um, and I found these Raspberry Pi fans. They come in a pair. If you order from Amazon, they're about six pounds. You can probably find them cheap on eBay. Um, they come with screws and bolts if you want to attach them to a Raspberry Pi, but we don't need these guys, so put them to one side. With Raspberry Pi, you'd take these and you'd put them onto the pins of the Raspberry Pi. But we don't need any of that today. What we're gonna need is just some scissors, a bit of super glue, and you can either use a soldering iron or you can twist the wires together. Depends how secure you wanna make it. Maybe a bit of electrical tape. You take your fans and you super glue the sides together like that, make sure you don't get any on the actual fan itself. So you put some super glue just along this bit here, attach them together, make sure the fans are facing the same way. Then what you want to do is you want to cut the ends of these wires here, just to take these little tops off. And if you have a wire stripper, that'd be even better. So you can strip the little edge of the wire here, being careful not to pull too hard on this bit here because it's quite, they are quite fragile. So strip these bare, then you attach the red with the red, the black with the black. You want to keep access to the end so when you attach them together make sure you don't cover them just yet because what we're going to do is we're going to take any old usb cable so if you've got any of these lying around the house a you know regular micro usb cable or any usb cable you've got that's you're not using anymore maybe for an old phone or something like that as long as it's a five volt usb cable it should be fine so you take that you cut the end that isn't the usb off so for example on this one here it ends in two wires some wires will have be data cables, so for example this one here, you'll have four wires sticking out. Now we only need the power positive and negative terminals here, so for this one it's a red and white, so we attach the red to the red connectors we made here, and the white to the black. Um, that's just how this is covered. Usually it'd be red and black, so for example on this one, the data cables are the white and the green ones, and the red and black are the power cables. So we'll just put some tape around these, you know, tuck them away and attach the red to the red joints we've made on here and the black to the black. Then once you've done that, you have something that should look like this. Now I've made two of these so far. So I've got this one, but I've also made this one. Uh, this was for my Sony NEX 3N. Uh, because it had a flip up screen and it couldn't tuck behind it. So what I did is this actually goes over. So if you imagine, I'm not going with me today, but if you imagine it goes over the flip up screen like that and just tucks behind to the back of the camera. Now, if we were actually doing it, we'd probably put it the right way around, <laughs> which is this way with the label facing in so it can get the fan working. It turns these fans and keeps the back of the camera cool. So I also made a pair of these for my friend who had an A7 III and he said that works absolutely great with his camera. Um, the main thing is just figuring out how you want to tuck it behind the 
viewfinder of uh, the the screen. So A6000, it's like behind there with the A6400 and the A6100 and A6600 with the flip up screen. It's again, you can just pull it out part way. I'll take it off here in a minute and I'll show you how it goes. Okay, so I've changed cameras now. So now I'm recording with my A6000 and this is the A6400. So as I said, this has a slightly different screen and that it can flip up. So you have a couple of options here. You can, if you're having a screen back like that, you just do the same. You tuck the fan in the small gap there. It's, it's not a perfect science. The main thing, as long as it's blowing air onto the back of the camera here, onto this bit, uh, it should provide enough cooling to stop the camera from overheating. You wanna make sure there's a slight gap between the fan and the back of the camera, just so air can properly get through and then exhaust out again. If you're having the screen in flip up mode, maybe you'd like to attach some string to this as well, or like I did on this one, and then you could use it in that screen up mode. So you tuck it down there. And that should provide enough cooling still. Now this doesn't just work for the A6000 series of cameras. I'm sure it works for many cameras as long as the screen comes away from the camera in some sense. And because they're such low wattage, they use barely any power. And it, what it means is you can run your camera for a good few hours without overheating. So I've live streamed for three, four hours whilst recording in full HD and 4K on this camera running continuously. And with the fans, I had no overheating problems whatsoever. So yeah, this is my solution for overheating on these small mirrorless body cameras. All right, that was just a quick video guys. Cheers for watching. If you like this video guys and you want to see some more DIY camera hacks and stuff, uh, just like the video and subscribe and uh, drop us a comment. And I'll catch you guys in the next one. See ya.